I'm Lamont. And I got Bible issues. And I'm Leia. I got issues. That's a good song. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> and you're tuning into the, Lam- the Lamont and in Leia, Leia podcast. podcast. So happy holidays from Lamont and Leia. If you are celebrating Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, um, or other, something other, like happy holidays. Um, this is the time of year to be with family, our loved ones, enjoy. So today on the Lamont and Leia podcast, we are talking about weaponizing the Bible. What is it? Why is it done? How has it been done? And how it affects people? Right? Um, We have also invited Pastor Waverly Kelly to join us for this topic. So I I believe it's going to be a great topic for us. All right. Um, I think he's here. So let's go get him. All right. Let's go. Waverly, would you do me a favor and our audience a favor by introducing yourself so they can get to know you a little bit better? Okay. Waverly Kelly and be 41 years old uh, soon. Uh, husband and father, uh, blended family. We have six all together, ranging from 22 all the way down to 11 months. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so, so pretty active as a father. Um, I am in ministry. Um, my birthday, December 20th, will be 26 years of preaching ministry, um, 11 as an ordained pastor. And, uh, man, I'm just, I'm just grateful for that. I'm an avid sports fan. I'm a regular guy. I'm a dude. I I, I laugh if it's funny. I, you know, I, you know, I'm not one of those uptight, you know, can't breathe around, you know, everything's a sin guy, you know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a guy that lives a life that just happens to be called of God to help others reach their destiny spiritually. So, um, that's, that's pretty much who I am, man. I mean, as we have this conversation with, with us today, there will be other things that come out. Um, you know, but other than that, that's it. I'm James Bond fan. I, I, I love, if James Bond comes on the television, no matter what movie it is, I'm probably watching it to the chagrin of my wife. She like hates when that happens, and I'm like, stop. Leave it to be <laughs> right. We're watching this, All right? So um, that's it. I mean, we'll we'll talk today, you know, and uh, other things will come out. But yeah, that's pretty much who I am. I love God. I love His people. Um, I think God's greatest resource on the earth is his people. And I think the way that you get most things done in this life is through relationship with yeah. others. Agreed. Uh, and so we often have the vertical relationship, right? But we struggle with the horizontal relationship, which if you look at the cross, the cross is a vertical and a horizontal bar. And so you can't just have a vertical relationship without having a horizontal one. It's incomplete. So, uh, and I think what we're going to talk about tonight or today, where, where, whatever time, I don't even know what time it is. It's going to, it's going to help us understand that. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So Leia, are you ready to jump into the main topic? Yes. Um, I just want to put a little disclaimer out there. I know we forgot to do one at the beginning. Um, But for our audience today, we are going to be talking about religion. If that's something you don't like, um, that is perfectly fine. Feel free to join us on our next episode or check back on uh, any of our other episodes that we have posted on both um, our uh, podcasting websites as well as our YouTube and Facebook. Um, But if y'all are ready to join us on today's topic, then we can go ahead and get started. Stick around, even if you don't dis- even if you don't like the topic. I promise you, they're going to be something for you. <laughs> all right, all right, all you. So, when people say someone is weaponizing the Bible, what are they really saying? Well, we have to we have to break down the word weapon, uh, weaponizing. Right, the ing is a 
an action word that that uh, or suffix that brings it to the present that something is currently happening with the word and then we have to look at the base word weapon right right so weaponizing means that they are using something as a tool to destroy others uh and that simply is not uh the biblical standard for what god uh inspired the word to be uh the bible is not to be weaponized in any way shape or form uh it is it is to be used in a fashion that helps people understand who god is helps them understand who they are and helps them understand the gap between God and man and how God sent his son Jesus to fill that gap so that we might be with him eternally. Um, so it's a, it's a weaponizing the, the, the Bible is, is, is probably one of the, and we don't compare sins like big, big sin, little sin, this or that, but Weaponizing the Bible, in my opinion, has to be one of the most egregious uh, and gross and negligent things that you can do, uh, considering that we have to understand the originality of why God gave it to us. It's a love letter. Uh, <laughs> it is a love letter. It is not uh, something that should condemn folks. It's something that should correct you and bring you into the path of correction. And, you know, we have to, if, if I were to put a disclaimer out there, Leah, like, like you just said earlier, I would, I would tell people that Bible is like a letter from your dad or from somebody who really cares about you, who really wants you to succeed in life and do the absolute best that you can. And so parts of that are going to be things that you don't do well that they're going to point out and say, you need to tighten this up. You know, if you got a mom or a dad or an uncle or a cousin or a grandfather or somebody who really has a vested interest in your success and your future, they're going to look at you at times and say, uh, Leah, what's going on with this? Why are you acting like this? <laughs> Why is your attitude like this? Right. If somebody who really cares about you, they're going to yeah. ask you these questions. And so most people, well, a lot of people who don't want to be accountable at any level, they'll take that correction as, oh, they're judging me. No, 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 no. Time out. No, we're actually trying to help you become what you should be in this life. So continue on, man. I, I can I can talk about this all night. Yeah, so no. I want to make like, questions answered that you ask. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I, I get that piece. I get that piece. Like, people are trying to help. But sometimes in the way they come off. Mm -hmm. It's not helpful or right. it is judgmental. And mm -hmm. so that's the human flaw, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I tell people all the time, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Um, in 25, almost 26 years of ministry, I've learned to say hard things softly. Um, hey, you know, let me talk with you especially if I'm given the charge to be uh, a leader in some way and that, you know, I'm, I'm being held responsible for certain things. Uh, and it's my, it's my calling or assignment to help you get somewhere spiritually. Then there may be a challenge that I issue. There may be something that I see um, that, that I may have to talk to you about. It's not, it's not uh, condemning. We, we as people have to remember that all of us, that God is challenging all of us to be who we're supposed to be. And so I can't look down my nose at you and say that you're not doing this or you're not doing that. Um, but I have to also be mindful of my own shortcomings when I deal with you. So I'm always going to try to deal with you. I should always try to deal with you with a level of grace and understanding and humility while still being uh, serious about what needs to be addressed. Um, that's that's always helpful but you're right there are people who have no tact uh who have no humility who have no grace who forget that they are human beings flesh and blood themselves with the same kinds of issues and subject to the same kinds of failings as the next person 
And we have to be mindful of that when we address one another. And that's why love is the principal thing. Uh, the Bible says that God is love. He doesn't do love. He doesn't try love. He is love. And so because he is love, we have to we have to be like him when we deal with people. Yes. Um, Leah, what about you? Like, what does weaponizing the Bible mean to you? Um, well, in the context that I usually see it, it's usually uh, taking Bible verses like out of context, right? Mm -hmm. Like I also grew up Christian. I also have read the Bible, probably not all the way through, but pretty much, pretty much, except for all those you know, those chapters that are about like, he betrothed he and he did the, I was like, okay, that's too much. I'm not reading it. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you Lydia. covered a lot of your reading in Pathfinder, Slaya. Yeah, I totally did that. <laughs> I didn't totally just skip all that and say I did it. Anyway, um, so I, I find that people like to take, I was trying to look for like a, a list because I can't, I don't write any of these down, but the thing that annoys me the most is when people take part of a verse or part of a verse that is part of a paragraph or a whole like, you know, informational text. Yes. And then they'll be like, well, see this one line out of this one thing supports what I'm trying to say. But then you go back, you read the stuff around it. Think about what was happening during that time period, because it the bible is like a historical text like it's happening during a time period it's happening during other things happening in history you know so like that that's that's what i see a lot <laughs> yeah no um yeah. agreed go ahead go ahead Waverly. if i can speak to that me, me and leah could probably be best friends because i say this all the time one of my responsibilities is is uh training and developing young ministers from a standpoint of studying uh preaching and presenting okay and so one of the things that we talk about is context always determines interpretation context always determines interpretation help me understand what's happening in the, in the moment help me what's under what's happening before we get to this passage Help me understand what's happening after this passage so that we can have a total body of work and understanding so that we will not get into misinterpreting the scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we have to have context uh, that, that runs into our interpretation. Otherwise, it's just a free for all. And like you said, we could snatch a scripture down and say, well, it says this. And when you go to it, it's like, no, that's not what it says yeah. at all. <laughs> so what, one of the problems I have uh, with with this current state of ministry um, is that there's such a low barrier to entry. Any Anybody who feels like they should do this can go buy a license online, right? haven't sat with anybody who's been able to watch their body of work over a long period of time and, and discern who they are as a person, their character, uh, their ability, their ability to take care of God's people. Um, no accountability whatsoever. Just go print some signs and some other stuff and voila, do your paperwork with the state and you got a church. This happens and it is a problem and it is why we have such such a, a gross misunderstanding of scripture because they haven't spent time being developed uh, in places that will help them understand scripture itself and help them understand how to handle the text. Um, you know, the Bible says study to show yourself approved. So that means somebody's got to approve you. You can't be approved on your own. Uh, it's like taking a driver's uh, test, right? You didn't, you didn't just, while I whip out a driver's license, you had to go be approved. <laughs> and if you were crossing the lines, not hitting the signal when you were supposed to, all kinds of stuff, didn't have your hands on two and 10, uh, you know, all of that, then you're not going to pass. 
and there are a whole lot of preachers passing with no tests. I don't think my main problems with the preachers. I think it's it's the children, the children, the followers of God, right? So like when I think of when someone's weaponized in the Bible, it's usually in a way to prop themselves up or prop up their false self or control mm -hmm. or manipulate someone. So for example, mm -hmm. like I'm having a conversation with someone and they have the need to be like, the Bible says, cause they want me to like change my, I'm like, whoa, like, like we can have a conversation and we don't have to agree, but now you're trying to like control me in this instance. And I'm not appreciating that versus saying yeah. like well i disagree and this is why i disagree and this is what i see potentially for you that's that's a different conversation versus like well the bible says this so you need to do this like... well I, yeah i mean it just depends on your circle and your sphere um you know it really depends on the conversation you know i tell people all the time because i get all kinds of questions as you can imagine I, I get all all kinds of uh, questions and people coming up to me with this or that. And I, and I always tell them something. I always tell them this line. I, I've been hired by God as a spokesperson. Therefore, I don't have anything to say other than what he has already said on the matter. <laughs> so so let's go to the scripture and let's look at it at, at base value for what it is. And let's, I said, now you're coming to me because you believe that I have the tools to answer your question. I don't always get it right. I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to tell you something I don't know. But at the same time, if I'm solid on it, I'll leave it with you. We can agree to disagree. I may not change. There's certain, there's certain things for me uh, that are just flat out laid out. There's no, there's no if, ands, or buts, or maybes about it. It just is according to scripture. And we have to, we have to either adhere to it or not. I'm not going to love somebody any differently if they don't. But at the same time, hey, there is a baseline standard that, that we have to operate by if we're going to, if we're going to honor people and God at the same time. So, um, you know, it just really depends, uh, Lamont, on the circle that you're in. You know, some people will take the Bible and try to beat you with it. <laughs> it's, unfortunately. It's, yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, and then you got others who, who, who will hear truth and deny it. And so how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you not convince them, but how do you help them understand that the truth doesn't need help. You know, if I were to back away from what I'm saying to you, you could find this truth and it would be that regardless if you were talking to me or the next person, you know? Right, 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 right. Kind of like when your yeah. parents give you instruction. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, you might not want to do it at the time. You know what I mean? Like I, I have a 13 year old son. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> eventually you're going to get it and understand what I'm saying. And that's how it is sometimes, you know, right. even with me, there's certain things, man, in scripture, I'm like, Oh Lord, help me. When he said, uh, forgive your neighbor 70 times seven. He didn't mean 490. He just meant as many times as they offend you, forgive them. I'm like, hold on Jesus. Now this guy knows what he's doing is wrong. And you mean every time? Yeah. Every time, every time, every time okay <laughs> i'm working on it <laughs> for sure for sure i've seen like these signs like oh my goodness the people that stand on like street corners all the time oh the oh um, mm -hmm. they sell bean pies or just i don't know but oh, there'd be people stand on the street corner just yelling at everyone that passes oh, by okay. I was no, just I know like, okay 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 First of all, first of all, I I I probably get in trouble for this, but I I, I kind of laugh at those people. Let me tell you why I laugh. <laughs> this is terrible marketing. It is terrible marketing. <laughs> That's what I always say. Like it even is. like even when I was going to church, like you know, every week I was in church. I did my Bible studies, all that. I was just like, bro, you make me not want to go. Like <laughs> just to be like. 
<laughs> but I tell people all the time, I said, see, that's what I get compared to. That guy right there, that crazy guy is what I'm being what I'm being uh compared to every time something happens. I, I'm defenseless against that kind of marketing because it just it just puts everything in a bad way in a bad light. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I get it. I understand. So what can but, you do though? Because they have a right to be out there. Uh, yeah, I mean it's I I know they do and that's fine. I just yeah, I'm just like I pretty sure that from what i remember a, the one of the biggest concepts in the bible is love and showing love to others and i'm just like that's not really showing me right. or anyone else that people, concept <laughs> people don't understand love they think they do mm -hmm. okay now i'll confess to you when it comes to god's love i don't have a clue okay <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a clue. I, at best, am able to explain explain it at a limited level that I understand it personally. But I don't know, okay? And anybody that tells you that they know, they don't know. What would, what would make someone give their only son for people who ain't paying attention? And don't realize that he's, he's their sustainer, that every breath that they take is, is based on his grace, but yet they don't acknowledge him or or think that he is worthy enough for them to live their life for him because he gave his for them. If it was me, I, oh no, you're you're gonna do this, but no, I, I that's not that's not love. The basis of love is choice. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And if you understand choice, you can understand that when you, I don't know if either of you are married. I don't know. Um, I you, am, and Liz engaged. She might as okay, well so, <laughs> okay, so so you made a decision, right? Now all the butterflies and all the stuff, you know, you, you know that stuff's gonna fade, right? There's there's gonna be a day when you wake up and look at your spouse if you haven't already had it, and you're gonna be like, I can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Leah is coming. Trust me, my friend. So, wait, I wait. Believe <laughs> I chose you, right? And she's or he's looking back like, yeah, I I don't know what I was thinking either. Uh, that is when the marriage starts. <laughs> That's when love actually starts because you're making a decision to stay with that person through thick and thin ups and ups and downs. Uh, for better, for worse. That's the definition of love, not not how you feel when you got the ring, or when you saw them walking down the aisle. All uh, that that's that's emotion, and, and that's good. It has its place, but that's not the basis of love. Love is a choice, and so God, God's love, He chose to do this, and so that's why we have to allow people to have and be able to make their own decisions even if it's not the decision that we would have made for them. Why do people weaponize it? We don't know. Yeah, why do people weaponize it? And and then earlier you were saying like the Bible is a letter from God telling us what he likes and what he thinks of us. And mm -hmm. so many people just seem to misinterpret or misread or um they look at it through a lens of like the american dream or a political party um yes versus versus so glad what, you said versus like connection or human connection mm -hmm. so we're in this political season all right uh right now and by the time this probably airs it'll be it'll be over okay there is a there is a crazy deranged type of I'll say it cult cultish type behavior when you begin to talk about American politics and the Bible. This 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 is happening right now. Mm -hmm. It is called Christian nationalism. 
Hmm. Okay. Okay. okay that and you have to look at it and understand the definition of Christian nationalism. Okay. First of all, God is not an American. Right. You would be astonished by how many people actually think Jerusalem and Bethlehem are somewhere in the United States. Like he is from here. He is not an American at all. Yeah. I've, so, I've definitely heard people compare like different stories in the Bible and saying, yeah, and this is like America. I'm like, no, that's literally a place that exists elsewhere. <laughs> like that, that, that place is real. It's not an analogy. <laughs> right. So when you look at the time in which we've been a, this great experiment as, as the United States is called, right? How many years? Uh, um, 1776, right? Yeah, yeah. not long. <laughs> 1876, 1970s. Come on, man. We haven't been around that long as, as, as it were to other nations, particularly mm -hmm. those in, in, in our Eastern culture of Jerusalem and uh, Judea and Samaria and yeah, all of these. Places. Yeah. Hold on a minute. God, God is not God is God is not referring to you. <laughs> He's referring to himself. <laughs> what I always tell, you know, this I don't know how far I should go here, but I'm just gonna go. Okay. I stood up in an all-white seminary <laughs> and told an all-white seminary that there were no white people in the old testament. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's I, fair. I really I need to hear. How I, this mean, went. <laughs> I mean, like were the Romans white? Were the Romans white? Like I don't know. Oh well, that's New Testament. So so okay. I'll get to that. Old Testament, right. yeah. Right. Right. Old Testament, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so sure. so this is probably gonna go out. And I'm probably gonna get some calls out of this, and I'm good with that. I don't care. <laughs> All right. I'm here now, so forget it. But so. Genesis, right? Mm -mm. First of all, before I even say that, scientifically, scientifically, we understand that the cradle of civilization is where? Africa. Africa. Yeah. Right? Because um, that, that's where the Garden of Eden was, was between the Tiger and the Euphrates. And that's those, exactly what those I was about rivers to are still around. They're, they're still right. by the tigers and the Euphrates are still around and they are on the continent of Africa. So, right. right. And that's without a Bible. That is without a Bible. So when we look at the Bible and quote what you just said, Eden is along the Euphrates and the Tigris River, right? Right. And you come then you come all the way through the New Testament from Egypt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, all the way through to to Jerusalem, right, mm -hmm. and all the way through to, Jer to 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 all of these places along uh, in in the Middle East, right? What do the people in the Middle East really look like right now? They are people of color. Some of them are darker than you and I, brother. Some of them are darker than you and I, right? So you don't get into the Romans and places like that until Paul has hands laid on him in Africa, by the way, for his first missionary journey. And then he goes and starts preaching the gospel in the other places that have Caucasian brothers and sisters. Right. Right. That's historical. That is not uh, any way, shape or form trying to downcast or downtrodden any other race or any other ethnicity. No, we're just talking about historical fact, right? Because the, the whole basis of why the Gentile was going to be accepted is because when Jesus came to his own, they received him not, right? That's the scripture. Mm -hmm. And he then made salvation available to the common man, which is the Gentile. And that's where, that's where Paul comes in as the apostle to the Gentiles. So he goes out all of these different places, you know, Asia Minor and 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 Ephesus and Tarsus and Corinth and uh, Rome and all of these Thessalonica and all of these different places that don't really have black people in them, right? For the most part, 
So this is where you this is where you get into that. And and when I said what I said, you could hear a pin drop, Leah. And you could cut the tension with a knife in the room. But I asked somebody to get up and refute me, and there was not one. They probably just hadn't even thought of that. They're like, oh my goodness, you're right. Yeah, their minds <laughs> were just probably like blown, like, oh, right? Yeah. Because yeah. Cause I, I like everyone sees God as white or Jesus as white because of white, Je like, white Jesus. White Jesus? <laughs> oh my they probably goodness. see the people of the Bible as themselves. Um, and yeah. So, like, you probably just like destroyed everyone's, like, like what? Literally. That's Literally. funny to me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, hey, that's 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 a great looking fella. You know, that's he's not Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, he um... looks awesome. Like he looks like he's supposed to be in all the gap and Calvin Klein commercial. <laughs> Everything he is, he is, he can see all the eyes. Yeah. That's not <laughs> <laughs> the person that represents Jesus from us was a painter's favorite, um, a, a famous painter's like nephew. I'm not sure if it was like Leonardo or Da Vinci. It was one of them. It was like one of them. Like they they painted his nephew, and that's that has been passed down. Like, oh, this is Jesus. Like, right. <laughs> so so the truth of the matter is, he's probably somewhere looking between you and Leah as far as skin tone? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like probably like like Indian descent. Yeah, like, kinda you just, know? you know, wool woolly hair, right? Feet like brass. That's the scripture, right? Okay. So come on. Let's let's but but the reason why I said all of that is because that itself is a weapon because representation matters. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I can get you to think that it looks like that your savior looks like me, it becomes a weapon against you trying to become what you're supposed to become. Yeah. It, it always keeps you underneath where you should be because you don't see that he actually looks like you. The Bible has been used to oppress women heavenly heavily 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 like um so I'm, I'm part of the sda church like those are my people i'm not sure if i still consider myself a seven day adventist but those are people like if i'm gonna go worship yeah. that's who i go worship with are my seven day ad people and <laughs> um recently recently we had a conference where we could have ordained women pastors and they used the Bible saying it wasn't biblically sound for women to be ordained pastors. They can preach, they can preach and they can go to seminary and they become pastors, but we're just not going to ordain them because <laughs> it's not biblically sound. <laughs> Dude, my friend, my friend who's a female pastor had to talk me off a ledge because I was ready to burn the church down. I was like... <laughs> And she like and she's a pastor. She's like, hey, I understand, <laughs> and I need you to calm down. I need oh. to stay in the church if you choose, because <sighs> I need people like you to have these conversations. Nothing's going to change unless we keep having these conversations, you know. And so I was like, Christine, because I love you. <laughs> that's the only thing that's keeping me from snapping right now. Like the only thing. <laughs> I'm ready to burn the church down. <laughs> Um, but no, like even, and like, this was like a few years ago and I'm just, and I was really disappointed. I'm like, really, sure. we're going to go this route. You're going to continue to oppress women who has the power to ordain, not you. <laughs> like no. and the, the crazy thing is the crazy thing is we had a prophetess. Her name was Ellen G. White. Right. Not That's the crazy part. By man ordained by God. Like if we believe like major like, prophet I, though. Yeah. Like if Adventists believe like she was a prophet and she had visions and she spoke from God. She did. He ordained her. He he literally ordained her. You so didn't, here, and you have the power to ordain no no one. So no here's one. the here's, but, sorry, here's okay. the here's <laughs> the problem. No, you're good, man. You're good. Here's, here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. 
we have to stop, okay? We have to stop submitting ourselves to places that don't line up biblically. Period. If you look at the scripture, you'll see all kinds of women in leadership positions. Deborah. Right. Deborah. Mm -hmm. You I can keep I can keep going. This is old testament. Yeah. All right. Here's the here's the thing. Women have to make sure, okay, that they are not allowing themselves to succumb to a system that will not recognize the gifts and callings of God on their life. That they don't sit and support any organization that weaponizes itself against their advancement in the kingdom of God. Period. There ain't even nothing else to say. On as sure. you submit and support that kind of organization or organizations like it, you will always have to be subject to that organization. And here's the thing that I tell women all the time. Who called you? So go to a, go to a place where, where they will allow you to be what God has called you to be. Period. Well, what is the Bible saying? <laughs> what does the Bible say? <laughs> all right. Let's get all the way down into it so that we understand it. He says that I give you pastors according to my own heart that will feed the flock of God with knowledge. He also said that there's a now is a time where it'll be neither Jew nor Greek nor male nor female, but I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. All, A-L-L. -L. Yeah. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. There's no... There's no demarcation of the sexes there. It's about a call. And if and if he's called of God, we have to recognize it and ordain it as God sees fit for it to be ordained. Period. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um so let's let's take a break and then when we come back, um I have one more question for you. Alrighty, sounds great. All right. And we're back. I bet you guys didn't expect me to say that this time. <laughs> Alrighty, so we talked a lot. We talked about like what weaponizing is and we even gave examples like historically and biblically and personally like of ways that we've seen it and it's been done. Um, I don't think we have to worry too much about, you know, us three, but <laughs> <laughs> how can we or someone stop weaponizing the Bible? Like, what are some ways or precautions that people could take if they're, let's say, having a conversation and they're disagreeing with someone and they want to support their, you know, their side of the conversation uh, biblically, which is fine. But how can they go about that conversation and make sure that they are using scripture to support what they're saying well like in not a way that's going to you know tear the other person down or what is the other the phrase you used lamont like false self or like oh um, earlier I, yeah i said false self or um control or manipulate others or yeah. prop, prop up themselves yeah. yeah so what is what are some ways that people could do just to, you know, double check on their end that they're being like, not truthful, but like being like true. 
to gotcha. the scripture. Yeah. This may sound so far away from the question that you asked, but it's not. Um, one of the ways that people can do this is to travel. Hmm. Yeah. Most people, the, the people who I think weaponize the Bible uh, more than anybody else are people who have never left their town. Mm, makes sense. <laughs> no, it I, makes sense. They're comfortable. Yeah. Right? yeah like... they've, never, they've never ventured out beyond their own sphere of influence. They've mm -hmm. never gone to another town or a city or a country or they've never been any other place other than where they've been. And so that informs every decision, yeah. every thought process, everything that they do is informed by their minimal experience in life. When you travel, when you go to different places and you see different things and you understand that the world does not revolve around how you see it or how you think about it, or your own experiences and that people are getting along just fine on another part of the planet. <laughs> right. Uh, and they don't, they don't even know who you are or what you believe or how you think or even care. It doesn't matter. That expands your intellectual palate. And because your intellectual palate is expanded, you automatically say, wait a minute, you mean I could, live yeah you can't <laughs> you mean you mean i can this person over here is and they don't even you know yeah it's life yeah. and it's good to be lived in a way that you gain these experiences so that you understand when you begin to deal with people how to deal with them one of the things that i've been blessed with man is i have a lot of stamps on my passport and I've, and I've been able to see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And because I've been able to see a lot of things, I don't think in, in any way, shape, or form like the kid I was from Kansas City, Kansas. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm way past that 17-year-old kid, 18-year-old kid that left there and didn't come back. Travel. That's one of the ways. Another, another way is consider your own failing. Okay. Okay. Compassion. Man. Yeah. Yeah. People, people gravitate to other people who are transparent and open and honest about who they are and what they are and what they are not. If you failed in life, you ought to be able to help somebody not fail. And you ought to be true and transparent about your failings and your shortcomings and be honest with who you are so that you can help other people. And when you do that, you automatically come down off that high horse. Automatically, because you're like, okay, so and so did such and such. Yeah, yeah, I, I did that too. I remember. Let me talk to you about it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So did you did what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Come on, let me talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've had that conversation. Somebody's coming to me and saying, "Oh man, you know, I messed up this and then the third. And I'm like, "Yeah." You did, but I did too. Let me talk to you about it. They're like, huh? <laughs> you? Like, yeah. Yeah. Me. I'm a guy. I'm a person. I'm, I'm not special. It's, yeah. That yeah, endears I, people to you. Right. Yeah. Child of God in search of yes. the right path. Yes. So. Yeah, I'm a person, man. I'm, I'm not some statue or, you know, some robot or something. I'm a dude. I'm, you know, hey, whatever. Ask my wife. She'll tell you about the, uh, uh, you know, me not being able to, you know, hang up my clothes sometimes. And uh, <laughs> you know, just just stuff. You know, what I mean, just regular guy stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. So those those two things in particular. Um, and 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 the third thing is when you look at who God is in relationship to who we are. He's perfect. We're not. Right. So we have to we 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 have to maintain that level of honesty and decency. So those three things are the things that I always try to do to keep myself, uh, you know, 
in a way of humility when I'm dealing with people, um, when I'm talking to them about struggles and issues and things and circumstances in their life, um, to never forget who I am and where I come from and the many things that God has forgiven me for. Okay. All right. Leah, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, no. No. <laughs> I guess I I really liked what you said, actually, because it's very similar to what I would say. Like, definitely being able to think about things from other viewpoints. I think that goes back to what we are saying about context, like, and the way you're interpreting things. Um, because yeah, someone who maybe hasn't had a, like other experiences may read something in the Bible or learn something at church and go, okay, and only be able to see it from their point of view as just them having lived the life they live and not anyone else's point of view, or maybe even considering a different way that could be interpreted or used and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I would say put in yourself in other people's shoes mm -hmm. like definitely to like the people on the street corner who are yelling at each other like put yourself <laughs> ac put yourself across the street you know like do you want to be yelled at i don't i mean i would assume not <laughs> yeah. most people don't want to be yelled at all the time so that's what i would say <laughs> no one thing one thing that now that i'm 40 turning 41 soon preaching for 26 years. I go back and look at some of the messages that I preached in like my teenage years and my twenties. And I read some of the transcripts and I'm like, Oh God, this is terrible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this pretty sure bad. someone was blessed that day. I'm pretty sure someone was blessed that day, <laughs> but I get you. I feel you. I feel right. you. You know, you're like, Oh man, this is bad. Right. And he's like, You've grown so much as a person, and you're like, man, what, what was I thinking about when I looked at it this way? You know, why did I think that it was this way? You know, but life experiences have a way of teaching us, even when we don't think we're being taught. And when you go back and look at something, you're like, man, okay. So I always really, I really try to keep that. Now, when I'm writing something, I'm like, how is this going to age? <laughs> what is this going to look like in five years? Am I going to be satisfied or happy with this? Or am I going to be like, oh, my goodness, this is bad. For sure. For sure. Um, I think for me, um, I, I'm such a big component in having a relationship with Christ. And I feel like he's such a good and positive example so i would say look for jesus in it like what are you saying look for jesus in mm -hmm. it um so like leah you're right like those people across the street would jesus be yelling at people across the street probably not probably not no. if the bible is all about jesus throughout the old and new testament then in everything we read everything that we say everything that we do it should reflect him right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if i'm not reflecting him then i'm probably not doing it the best that i can um and that's something to think about something to think about true very true very true um, Waverly, Lay and I, we want to thank you so much for volunteering for this subject. This is not always an easy subject to have, but thank you for volunteering, coming on. If people wanted to get a hold of you and wanted to talk to you about this subject or any other subject, what would be the best way for them to contact you? Um, social media handles, man. Everything is at Waverly Kelly. Very simple. Uh, okay. At Waverly Kelly. You see me sitting there, you know, with a, I don't know what kind of shirt it was, but it's <laughs> courtesy of my wife, uh, <laughs> at Waverly Kelly. You can find me there. You can hit me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, you know, TikTok. I'm there. So all of those different places you can find me. 
at any given point. And I promise you, if you hit me up, I'll hit you back. I definitely will respond. Awesome. Thank you. And as always, all of that information will be in our show description. So please check that out. Um, what are you currently working on? You working on anything that you'd like to share with us? Man, I got a lot going on. Uh, I'm working on a book right now. I got, a, I got a couple books that I'm writing, but one in particular. Um, as I crossed the threshold of 25 years in, in preaching ministry, God kind of laid on my heart to kind of turn around and help guys and girls that's coming behind me. Hmm. Um, I think 25 years is a milestone. Yeah. Um, and I think I've learned a lot over that period of time. And so I'm going to talk to them about 25 things I learned over 25 years of ministry and right. help in, a, in order to help them not make some of the mistakes I made and not do some of the things I did and, you know, all those different things um, so that, uh, you know, they can be where they need to be in a time frame that they need to be there. Um, one of those things that I'm sharing, and I, I always give at least one, one of those points is the very first point in the book is going to be God always has another. Hmm. And what I mean by that is God always has somebody waiting in the wings to So we can't be arrogant. We can't be high-minded. We can't be anything like that. Moses had to be replaced. Joshua had to be replaced. <laughs> David had to be replaced. Solomon uh, was replaced. You know, all everybody has... A, a timeline and a time expiration. Uh, and so don't speed that timeline up by being arrogant, thinking that God has to use you. No, he does not. He chooses to use you and we should be grateful. So that's one thing I'm working on. Um, we didn't talk about this at all, but uh, I'm a recording artist. Ooh. I've done a lot of gospel uh music i've written stuff that hit, that's hit billboard all kind of stuff like that so okay um, so so as you're talking like i'm i'm imagining a kurt franklin kind of style is it like that or is it more like <laughs> is it different? yeah i mean it's kind of like that man you know uh you'll you'll you'll, you'll be able to take it out of time you know i've i've definitely uh gleaned some things from 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 uh Uncle Kurt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, yeah, that's it, man. Uh, just working that and books and, you know, entrepreneurial pursuits and uh, taking care of my family, man. It's a, I'm a regular guy. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really I'm really not, you know, a superstar in any way. I, I don't really desire to be. Uh, I just desire to be effective and help people, you know, become what they – uh, should become so between preaching which is one of my favorite things music you know writing um i'm doing what i should do all right that sounds good and to close us out is there any message that you would like people to know from your heart it could be about today's subject it doesn't have to be about today's subject but from your heart is there a message that you just feel like or need to share um God has been laying on my heart for the last probably about two years just to talk to people about identity. That they are unique, special, that the very the very definition of that or proof of that is their fingerprint. That no one in the world has their fingerprint. No one. And no one in the world has their speech pattern. And so by definition of that, God designed you to be here, not to be homogenized like a lump with everyone else, but he designed you to be exactly who you are, when you are, where you are. So be just that. And don't buy into the myth that you have to be something else in order to be received. Find your tribe. <laughs> Find the people who are going to value you, love you, respect you, allow you to be exactly who you are. If you're a nerd, be a nerd. That's great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
If you're the smart girl in class, be the smart girl in class. That's outstanding. That's exactly who you're supposed to be. Don't be ridiculed or criticized or made to feel indifferent about it. Be exactly who you are supposed to be and let God work on you on the parts that you don't like. That's all right. That's it. That's the message. Because, because when God when God looks out, he he doesn't recognize those who are posers. And there are a lot of people being posers that are asking God for blessings and God is looking like, I don't even recognize you. Who is that? Oh, 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 that's Waverly. I, oh, but he's trying to be Lamont right now. So uh, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bless him, but I can't bless him because he's acting like Lamont. And I didn't call him to be Lamont. I called him to be Waverly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, that's Thank it, you. my friends. Thank you. Um, thank you once again. Um, and we hope you guys will tune in next time. Today's life lesson is judgment is not good for our mental, physical health. The more you judge others, the more you judge yourself. By constantly seeing the bad in others, we train our minds to find the bad. Simple, right? But did you know that judging others can lead to an increase in stress? Stress can weaken our immune system and cause high blood pressure, fatigue, depression, anxiety, and even stroke. Instead, develop a curious mindset where you can explore. Curiosity helps us tap into a place of compassion for ourselves and for others. And that is today's life lesson. <laughs>